Hey everyone, this is Jet. And I'm Kanisha. And this is the Path to Peace and Profits podcast, where we help you create a peaceful mindset so that you can earn profits in your business. So welcome to Path to Peace and Profits podcast with Kanisha and Jet. We are excited to be on. Um, We have been working together now for how long? Oh, oh, about 18 months. Yeah, almost two years. Yeah. Um, Two women who about vision and goals and got together, met, and immediately knew that there was something here. So together, Jet and I have been working for now for the last probably three, four months. With this program. I think we started this in January because we had our first mindset mixer. So we started off the year with a mindset trying to get other women in the same mindset as us yeah. to just have that movement. And, you know, January is usually the time of the year that most women want to, or I say most women, but most people want to be able to change their mindset. So we yeah. started that off. So, uh, and then we started our program in February. Yeah. So we yeah. just finished our first um, coachees coming yeah. out of there. So, yeah. yeah. And we started the program because what happened is, of course, women, I think women, we have a way of one, we encourage, we inspire just being who we are. It's just our natural tendency. Um, and we was meeting women who were saying, we see you guys, we see what you all are doing, what's stopping me, how are we getting there? Right. And so we put our minds together and said, let's create a program because we want to see women win. Yeah. That's a huge thing for Jet and I. Even from the time we started working together, we've always been the two that like we feed each other's information. Um, if I'm winning at something, if I learn something new, I'm like, yo, Jet, check this out. Yeah, we're not gatekeepers. Not at we all. We don't want to hold all the information and we want to share it. No, and, and I've learned, and I'll be honest, like being an only child, that wasn't always my first uh-huh. impulse. But what I've learned, particularly in business, and I used to hear, I think it was, I don't know if it was Lisa Nichols who would say it, but I know Tony Robbins talked about it a lot, um, that you, Steve Harvey talks about it too, mm-hmm. that you should really pour into other people. Like if you want your business to grow and blossom, you have to pour to other people. And it's just my natural tendency to pour in people emotionally. Um, it was a little bit of a stretch to start pointing to people business wise. I'll be honest. And not because I don't think it was because I was intentionally not trying to. It was just not my first thought. Right. Yeah. See, I see that. But I also I like the quote where it says surround yourself with people that you want to be like or that you want to grow with. Yeah. So, you know, when you and I connected at a local business builders thing, um, I immediately said, I've always wanted to do exactly what you do. (laughs) How can we get connected? (laughs) And, you know, I had a vision of seeing us. I mean, it was the years on down the road. Just crazy to me still. Right. But there was something inside of me that has always been pulling me this way to help people. And yeah. I saw that you helped people and I bring a different skill set than you bring a different skill set. So I think that's why we met last year. And it's like, how can we bring both of our skill sets together? So I have lots of the business knowledge. I have lots of the strategy. I have lots of the um, like hands on marketing, networking. You have the mindset piece. Yeah. You know, I even called you and hired you myself. <laughs> So, I mean, I know what your program has done, not only for others, but for me. So when we decided to get together, we decided to put it together because when you start a business, Mm -hmm. your mindset has to be in line because there's going to be challenges that entrepreneurs face every single day that can derail you. Yeah. And so without having the right tools to get your mindset clear, get your mindset correct, you could really veer off of a path as an entrepreneur and one, not be successful for a quite a while until you fix that. Right. Yeah. And then I think, too, what happens is a lot of people, we get into business with this passion mm-hmm. and we don't understand what do I do when the passion goes away? What do I do when? it doesn't feel as fun anymore or as exciting anymore. How do I keep myself motivated? And sadly, because of a lot of us making money online, which is a great way to make money, um, you can be a solopreneur. Right. So you can be isolated. And then now you're left alone with your thoughts. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
and Lord forbid, like you have the in businesses is evans and flows. Like you have sometimes where it's peaks and valleys, and people don't talk about that a lot. A lot of times you were assumed that everybody, oh my God, everybody is doing is being so successful, and everybody's making all this money. But there are absolutely times in your business where you're like, well, see, that's the beauty of marketing <laughs> because yeah. businesses see downfalls. Yes. And if, but if you market correctly, nobody ever sees that, right? right. Yeah. So you feel it. Yeah. I mean, I've been there. I have felt those days, those weeks where it's like, you don't have any jobs. You don't have any clients. You don't have anything going on. And you're just like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. But then the next week you're so overwhelmed. Yeah. So you really have to have the right mindset to say, this is not how it always is. I'm not a failure. What can I do to get myself to this point? And yeah. that's where my corporate expertise with the sales process comes into place. Yeah. You know, they say it's just like planting a seed, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to plant a sunflower, it takes four to six weeks for a sunflower to bloom. You plant it today. What does it need? It needs water. It needs sun. It needs miracle grow. It needs soil. It needs everything. And a business is the same way. Yeah. So whatever you plant today you're not going to reap what you sowed today. You will in four to six weeks. It's the same thing with businesses. You have to market today to get business four to six weeks from now. Yeah. You have to network today to get for business four to six yes. weeks from now. Yes. Um, you have to sell today yes. to get business four to six weeks from now. So it's the same concept. Yeah. And I like to tell people, particularly when they're starting a business, because everyone I think now because of social media, everybody assumes, particularly because of all these comments about hit make six figures. Mm. And this, I, you know, I just had a fifty thousand dollar month. Well, when a person has a fifty thousand dollar month, they didn't start their business thirty days right before they had that fifty thousand dollar month. And when you're new to entrepreneurship or even been in it for a while and you're not having that success, you can start believing that there's something wrong with you. You start buying into like a mind shift. Or, oh, what was me? What is it with me? And and I'm going to tell you guys, one of the biggest things that come up and what we really help women understand, and we say women, we'll work with men too. We'll work with you guys if y'all <laughs> want us to. But um, what we really help women understand is we all have these emotional wounds and in in, um, theories mm -hmm. called trauma that happens to us as children. And all of that stuff is going to come up in your being an entrepreneur. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Because I believe, like I'm a God girl, so I believe that everything comes up that we might have the opportunity to heal it. And healing being, I now have this new awareness. I now have a, a new opportunity to have a different perspective of what's happening to me. Healing is not like, you know, put my hand on you, fall out. Right, <laughs> right. This new person. But it's literally because I now have a new perspective on what's happening to me, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. With the new perspective, I can shift. And most importantly... Oh, my God. When you learn this work that we teach is you get to identify who, how am I operating? Yeah. Am I operating from my emotional wound? Wounds being the false beliefs you have about yourself, your abilities, um, your business. Or am I operating from like my higher, wiser, smarter self? And I always like to equate that to am I operating from love or fear? Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. And if, because it's about the simplicity of it all, because if you start trying to break down every little point, it can get that can become overwhelming. Yeah. But if you just simply can look at it and go, OK, I need to call because one of the things you have to do as a business owner, a lot of times you got to either, like you said, cold call mm -hmm. or get out there and network. And some of us have this thing. I know for me, for years, I had this, this like this old mindset of like, no one wants to meet me. No one wants to talk to me. Who am I? Because I'm from like a it's small that town. That imposter syndrome oh blocking you yes, from your blessings. All the time. <laughs> and when I learned that I was showing up quiet and shy in a yep. room full of people, it wasn't their responsibility to pull me out of my shell. It was my responsibility to learn what is this message that I'm telling myself? Is it true? Challenge it and then create a new dialogue so that now when I walk in a room with people, I'm going to leave there knowing somebody. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, last year I hired you personally yeah. to help me navigate a situation where I wanted to leave the corporate world because I felt a draw to be more of an entrepreneur. Like that was a passion of mine, but I was too scared. I was living in fear. Yeah. So I hired you. I took your courses 
And then after what four to five sessions with you, I ended up just leaving. And then we did a retreat. Yeah. And then <laughs> in the retreat, um, I found out that my soul wound was rejection. Mm. And that's that's really interesting because I was in a sales role. Mm. And salespeople get rejected oh. all the time, nine times out of ten. So I really had to do a lot of deep diving, diving to figure out what's really on the inside. It's not my job that I felt was rejecting me and making me feel certain ways. It was people. Yeah. So I lived in a people pleasing state. Mm -hmm. And when people rejected me, it made my soul wounds come out and my inner child. Right. I yeah. made um, I throw fits, adult fits, not kid <laughs> child fits, you know, but I reacted a certain way. So I've had to kind of put language to that. Mm -hmm. So after you started talking about other soul wounds, I, with my corporate brain, started trying to pinpoint, okay, you've got business success and somebody having business success. Um, they may see their success as not as great as somebody else's. That brings on shame, yeah. which is another soul wound. Yeah, which is one of the worst ones, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Shame is a hard one to overcome, particularly one, if you're not aware of it. Two, the messaging of shame is I am not enough or there's something wrong with me. Like guilt says, I did something wrong. Right. Shame says I am wrong. And to walk around and move through life thinking that your entire being is wrong, that would be extremely hard to be a business owner from that emotional state. But believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there that do live like that. And I know because I was one. Are people to work with? I was one at one point. So okay. I know if I was one, I know there are many. Yeah. So if I can overcome this, I know that there are other people out there that were living like I was that we could help overcome wow. through this program. Yeah. Um, you know, there's abandonment, there's betrayal, there's humiliation. And again, they all tie back into owning a business, running a business. Yes. You don't even have to own a business right. to understand how these soul wounds affect you. Yes. Even if you're a manager, even if you're an employee, In you know, any type of leadership, leadership, role. because it's yeah. really going to, honestly, I think it, the danger of it with you being in that leadership position, it, it, creates an environment where your employees aren't safe. Oh, hundred percent. But even in a leadership role, you have to experience humiliation. Absolutely. And that's another soul wound. Yeah. So if you, if your soul wound is humiliation, you have felt that you've been hum humiliated your entire life. Mm. How are you going to be in that leadership role? Yeah. How are you going to be in a customer service role? You have to have some kind of humility and to be able to take the <laughs> constructive criticism yeah. and to be able to take what people say and let it roll off of your back yes. instead of taking it to heart and getting offended by it. That's right. Um, you know, take it and say, well, what can I learn from this and how can I make this process better yeah. rather than, you know, reacting out of fear yeah. and emotions. And, and the way that fear is showing up, because I know that there are some people, I remember years ago, I was at a um, an event where I was selling my book. I, used, I have a book called uh, Five Ways to Conquer Fear. I just don't know where it anymore. But, I've never seen that book. Yeah, I, I need to, to bring, bring that, that out. out. <laughs> but this guy, he goes, I'm not afraid of anything. And I would get that same response where people are like, well, I'm not really afraid until I start talking to them about the soul wounds. Right. Do you worry about being rejected? And they're like, well, Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the question that you really should ask yourself. How do I show up when I'm afraid that I'm going to be rejected? Right. How am I going to show up when I'm feeling humiliated? And if you're the boss or if you are in leadership or you own the business, how is that, how is that affecting your finances? Mm. How is that cutting into your profits? Because when you're in that shame place or particularly rejection, how many calls are you going to make? How many cold calls are you going to make? It's called <laughs> paralysis analysis, okay? Because if you have the fear of rejection or yeah. the, re the fear of, I'm not going to make these calls because nothing's going to come out of it because mm -hmm. you had done 20 calls before. Right. You had done 20 door knocks before, so to speak. They call it pounding the pavement mm -hmm. um, where you go door to door, business to business and try to sell your service or whatever your product is. And everybody says no. 
Now you're starting to create that paralysis analysis in your head where you paralyze yourself and your actions mm -hmm. because you're overanalyzing. Well, I'm not going to do that activity, right? Activity is the door knocking or the cold calling yeah. because it didn't.